Today, we're going to look at 10 foods that are guaranteed to be bad for your health. They are especially harmful because they are linked to obesity, diabetes, increase the risk of cancer and cardiovascular disease. If you want to become the master of your health, put a like and we'll get started. The number 10 product is white bread, and you will probably agree with this because many people say so. White bread is considered unhealthy, but you may have heard that wheat bread is healthy. However, both breads are made from wheat. Wheat is just one type of grain. When people talk about white bread, it doesn't mean drastically different. It just means that it has less fiber and vitamins because of the long processing time. The term wheat bread actually refers to whole grain bread, which is rich in fiber and vitamins. Today, we are warned about the harmful effects of white bread because of its empty calories and high degree of processing. However, it is recommended to eat more whole grain bread because fiber slows digestion and lowers the glycemic index. The glycemic index indicates the rate at which blood sugar levels rise after a meal. So it's important to understand the difference. The glycemic index of white bread is 75, while wheat bread has a glycemic index of 74. This is not a significant difference. Soluble fiber is the key part that our gut bacteria can use in food. While white bread has only 0.15 grams of soluble fiber, whole wheat bread has 0.6 grams. Thus, albeit slightly, whole grain bread contains more fiber. It is better to resort to other sources as white bread raises blood sugar levels. You may have already heard about this, but I will repeat myself because it is still a mystery to many. The glucose molecule is called glucose. It is a six carbon ring that when we eat foods containing glucose, it enters the bloodstream and is converted into sugar, specifically blood glucose. Now we understand what sugar is, it tastes sweet. But if we get it in the form of a chain, if we combine the same glucose molecules into long chains that can consist of hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of molecules, it will be starch. But it's the same molecule, just joined together. That's what sugar is, that's what starch is. But as soon as you take a piece of bread into your mouth, an enzyme called amylase starts to break those bonds, and you start to separate out the individual glucose molecules that are already inside. In your mouth, before you even finish chewing or swallowing, some of them are ready to be digested. That's why starch has a big impact on blood sugar levels. And the residue that remains in wheat bread and whole wheat bread is almost equally quick to break down. The next time someone tells you to avoid white bread, keep in mind that both white and whole wheat bread have the same properties. As for the comparison, when a diabetic doesn't have enough insulin, their blood sugar levels can drop so low that they pass out. In such a situation, they need to quickly raise their blood sugar levels, usually with a sweet product such as chocolate or orange juice. Wheat and wheat grains are some of the most allergenic foods causing inflammation and digestive problems for many people. Now that we understand this principle, it remains to add a few unpleasant facts about grains such as rice, instant oatmeal and all other grains to this list, as they are mostly made up of starch. I believe that you don't need to completely eliminate grains from your diet, but if you prefer them, it's worth it to opt for ancient varieties of grains that have not been altered or manipulated. Retaining their properties for thousands of years, such varieties include emmer, corn, spelt, which is also a type of wheat, rye and oats. When consuming these grains, it is recommended that you favor whole grains, meaning that you use them in flour or consume whole grains. For example, when eating oats, if you leave the grain whole or cut it into pieces, steel cut oats, this is much different from quick oats, which go through the process of steaming and grinding into flour. The latter is digested much faster because the glucose molecules begin to break down within seconds or minutes of ingestion. Whole grains, on the other hand, are digested much more slowly because of their smaller surface area, which contributes to the slow absorption of glucose by the body. In my opinion, most people benefit from eliminating gluten from their diet or reducing its amount. However, there are other factors in modern wheat that have undergone many hybridizations and grown with glyphosate that may have health implications. However, most people are advised to avoid gluten. The only foods that are gluten-free are rice and oats. 
Keep in mind that those who are very sensitive to gluten are advised to buy certified gluten-free oats because although oats themselves are gluten-free, they are usually produced on equipment where traces of gluten may be present. Therefore, if the packaging of the oats does not say gluten-free on the package, there is a chance that there is gluten in the product. Product number nine is a fruit juice, and number eight is a sugary cereal. And I'll talk about them together because they are often advertised as part of a healthy breakfast. How many times have you heard that in commercials? It's a typical breakfast that many people eat if they are having breakfast in a hotel or restaurant. Orange juice, skim milk with cereal, toast with jam, and of course coffee with sugar and cream or half and half. You would be surprised to know how many people prefer this breakfast to sausages, bacon, scrambled eggs or omelets. The main reason for choosing this breakfast is its low calorie content. But it's not just the amount of fat that matters. What is crucial is how the foods affect blood sugar levels and how processed they are. And these foods are very processed, while sausages and eggs are minimally processed. They are closer to what they look like in nature. If you add up the carbs, you get about 25 grams from orange juice, 12 from milk, 34 from cereal, 49 from toast and jam, and about 11 from sugar and butter, milk, or convenience foods. It all depends on the individual, but in my opinion, that's about twice as many carbs as you need to consume on a daily basis. And if you're overweight or struggling with inflammation, diabetes, or insulin resistance, that amount should be even less than half for good results. However, that's not all. The type of sugar consumed is also important. Glucose is a type of sugar that consists of a single ring. But when we talk about sugar that should be avoided, we mean added sugar or sugar in orange juice because it contains two sugars. They are joined together. So the six carbon ring is called glucose and the five carbon ring is called fructose. It is a white table sugar. It is recommended to be avoided because it is more than twice as harmful. In these two molecules, Glucose raises blood sugar levels, which is bad but not catastrophic in and of itself. Fructose is catastrophic because it's very similar to alcohol. Only the liver can process it. So if you consume a little, there will be no problem. But if you consume a lot, you will overload the liver and cause it to become fatty. This difference is noticeable between cultures that have eaten starch, rice, bread for centuries, and have not suffered from chronic diseases and diabetes. However, with the shift to sedentary lifestyles and the introduction of fructose-containing sugar into the diet, we have seen a geometric increase in diabetes. If you look at so-called healthy breakfast foods, it is clear that in orange juice, almost all of the carbohydrates are sugar. Even if it is natural sugar, it is comparable to the added sugar in white table sugar. It is a combination of glucose and fructose in roughly equal proportions. Skim milk has about 12 grams of sugar, depending on whether we use baby or adult cereal. The sugar level is different. Jam adds another 6 minus 8 grams of sugar to a few slices of toast, since sugar is added to both ingredients. Another couple teaspoons of sugar in the coffee. So there are 83 grams of sugar in this breakfast. And the only product that doesn't have a 50 50 ratio of glucose to fructose is skim milk, since it has lactose. However, after subtracting lactose and dividing in half, the proportion of fructose that negatively affects the liver and is similar to alcohol is 39 grams of fructose. This explains why consuming large amounts of sugar, especially fructose, becomes the leading cause of fatty liver disease. Once thought to be a disease of alcoholics, Fatty liver disease is now becoming non-alcoholic and its cause is fructose. Type 2 diabetes in adults begins to develop as early as adolescence. It's not such a healthy breakfast, and it's hard for me to see families in hotels feeding their children this product, and the kids become so addicted to it that they won't even try ham or eggs, preferring the sugary product. Fast food, the number 7 food that destroys the body is often found on nutrition charts at fast food restaurants. They usually list macros and calories, where the macros reflect the number of calories, percentages of fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Often these numbers don't look that bad compared to the recommendations, making it seem as if such food is relatively healthy. However, there are significant differences between fast food and real food. First, 
Real food has significantly more nutrients. It contains enzymes, whereas processed food such as fast food lacks this component. Also, real food has more fiber, which often goes unnoticed. Real food contains all the nutrients and enzymes we need to digest and absorb efficiently. Vitamins are present in food because they are needed to process food, turn it into energy, maintain the body and regulate metabolism and anabolism, and for cell renewal. Nutrients, minerals, vitamins and enzymes play an important role in keeping the body healthy and functioning properly. One of the main reasons for the lack of nutrients in fast food is that they are broken down during processing. As a result, fast food contains mostly sugar, chemical additives, and hormones, and the beneficial elements are lost. Sugar is added to flavor unpalatable food, and chemical additives are used to compensate for the loss of flavor caused by the destruction of natural flavors. Because of the use of the cheapest ingredients, harmful chemicals and hormones are often found in fast food. Compared to real food, fast food has less protein, healthy fats and fiber, resulting in rapid digestion. Therefore, blood sugar levels change slowly after eating real food, while they spike after fast food because of the high amount of sugar and processed starch. Real food keeps you satiated for a long time, while fast food causes a quick feeling of hunger. In addition, real food contains healthy fats such as polyunsaturated fats in fish, saturated and monounsaturated fats in meat, olive oil and nuts, while fast food contains mostly processed vegetable oils devoid of valuable properties. The number six product that poses a health hazard is alcohol. It should be understood that alcohol is a naturally occurring substance and is often associated with the culture of many societies where wine is considered part of the daily meal. Although alcohol has no health benefits, it can relieve stress and improve mood. However, its ability to cause psychotropic effects can alter brain function and lead to addiction. While alcohol can be a way for some people to relax, for others it can become an addiction leading to a variety of negative consequences. Excess alcohol can lead to fatty liver degeneration, nutritional deficiencies, and negative effects on the brain and liver. Product number five is artificial sweeteners, and I can't stress enough how much I dislike them. The main ones include aspartame, sucralose, acesulfame potassium, or acesulfame K, and the oldest of them all, saccharin which however is not as widely used these days due to the preference for other sweeteners in terms of flavor. These sweeteners are calorie free, which makes them popular as we seem to struggle with calories, seeing them as the enemy and striving to consume only low calorie foods. Often we hear the terms non-caloric and artificial sweetener used synonymously, although this is not true. There are natural non-caloric alternatives such as stevia and monka fructose, which are plant extracts. Artificial sweeteners are man-made chemicals similar to pesticides. For example, sucralose belongs to the chlorinated hydrocarbon family, and chlorine and carbon compounds like those found in sucralose are not found in nature. It is similar to many banned pesticides such as DDT, which causes cancer and damages DNA. In contrast, stevia and monk fructose, which are plant extracts, can be safe in moderate amounts although excess amounts can have a negative effect on the gut microflora. Therefore, although they can be used as sweet supplements, they should be consumed with caution so as not to overdo it. The fourth product to avoid is fried foods. The problem is not only that they are deep fried, although it is commonly said that fried foods contain too many calories, but it's not just that. The main problem has to do with the type of oil used. Usually, Vegetable oil such as soybean, canola, or corn oil is used for frying, which contains a lot of polyunsaturated fatty acids, and we are told that these are healthy fats that are essential. However, they are not. We only need small amounts of polyunsaturated fats such as EPA and DHA, which are commonly found in fish oil. The other polyunsaturated fatty acids are very sensitive to oxidation and are destroyed at high temperatures. When vegetable oils are processed at high temperature and pressure, they break down quickly. In addition, chemical solvents such as acetone are often used to extract the last drops of oil from the raw material. The first problem with fryers is the use of this particular type of oil. The second problem is that because of the high cost of oil, 
It is not thrown away after each batch, but is used over and over again, leading to oxidation, rancidity, and toxin buildup. The third product to avoid is margarine. It used to be thought that margarine would be the salvation of our health and cause a real revolution. We were persuaded to eat margarine exclusively, giving up butter. In the 1950s and 60s, it became ubiquitous, and it did find widespread use. The oil used to make margarine is the same type of butter we just talked about, with its destructive properties and unnaturalness. A process known as hydrogenation is used to give margarine a solid texture. This means that the oil is exposed to hydrogen under pressure and at high temperatures, resulting in partially hydrogenated oil, also known as trans fats. These trans fats are universally recognized as harmful and may soon be banned. All food packaging must list the presence of trans fats. However, there are ways around this rule, and some foods may be labeled trans fat free or no trans fats per serving. This means that manufacturers may reduce the serving size to claim that a product is trans fat free, even if it contains trans fats in small amounts. Therefore, it is important to read the label carefully and look for signs of hydrogenation or partial hydrogenation. This is the most undesirable option, but you should avoid margarine anyway because of the original oil used to make it. In second place are energy drinks, which are hugely popular. People consume them in huge quantities due to stress, constant fatigue and lack of sleep, believing that it is necessary to overcome the day and keep productivity high. Thus, these drinks are advertised. They usually contain significant amounts of caffeine, which is a stimulant. You may need the caffeine and you can have a cup of coffee, but it is important to do so wisely so that you are not tempted to consume energy drinks. Caffeine is a stimulant that is sometimes accompanied by other stimulants. In addition, these drinks contain sugar or artificial sweeteners, which we discussed earlier. However, the question is, do these drinks actually provide energy? Although they contain sugar, which can provide calories and, in theory, some energy, these drinks actually act as stimulants. They don't give you energy, but rather borrow it. That is, they don't stimulate your body to produce more energy. They actually force your body to work at its maximum capacity. I like to draw a parallel between energy drinks and credit cards because they are often advertised in a similar way. They give you all these promises that your life will improve. Just like credit card promises, if you just get another credit card, your financial situation will improve. At first, it seems that both energy drinks and credit cards can help you in times of need. For example, if you are facing financial difficulties or temporary hardship, they can help you through that crisis moment. However, the problem with both energy drinks and credit cards is that you have to pay for them later. When you take out a loan, you are essentially wasting your resources by getting less than you need, and then you have to pay it back. With energy drinks, you are literally taking a loan from your health, and then you have to pay it back. As for side effects, energy drinks do raise blood pressure, are linked to palpitations, arrhythmias, anxiety, insomnia, digestive problems, and adrenal fatigue. So tell me, do they improve your health? Do they give you energy? Or are they not such a good idea? Finally, the most destructive product to your health is sugary drinks such as sodas. As mentioned, they contain significant amounts of sugar, including glucose and fructose. They often use high fructose corn syrup, which is even worse because unlike disaccharides where the sugar molecules are bound together, in this case they are free-floating. This leads to a higher glycemic index and the negative effects of fructose. You get into a cycle of quick gratification and quick depletion, which allows you to drink soda over and over again without getting satiety like you get from other foods. This leads to serious health problems such as fatty liver, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, inflammation, and microflora disruption. Soda is especially dangerous because it is ubiquitously available and easily consumed. It is a major source of sugar and fructose in our diet, and with the dramatic increase in the consumption of high fructose corn syrup and soda, we have seen an epidemic of type 2 diabetes. So, if you really want to become a master of your health, be sure to subscribe to this channel, click on the bell and turn on all notifications. I look forward to your comments and likes. Be sure to watch these useful videos.